Many can immediately identify that noise as the famous sound of regret beloved Lucy Ricardo makes after her usual shenanigans fail her in the popular 50s sitcom, I Love Lucy. But what most people don't know is that Lucille Ball and her Cuban husband, Desi Arnaz, took part in their own personal shenanigans and overcame extreme adversity and opposition in order to attain the adored roles of Lucy and Ricky Ricardo. In her autobiography titled, Love Lucy, Lucille Ball exposes the struggles and obstacles she and her husband, Desi, were forced to conquer in order to attain their dream of starring in a sitcom together. Back in 1946, Hubble Robinson of CBS, vice president in charge of programming, had talked to me about a domestic comedy show. I was interested, especially if Desi could co-star, but the big brass at CBS thought he was not the type to play a typical American husband. But he is my husband, I told them, and I think it helps to make a domestic comedy more believable when the audience knows the couple's actually married. But CBS turned a deaf ear to my proposal to team up with Desi. One spring day in 1950, Desi and I decided that since nobody else wanted to have faith in us and our, us as a team, we'd form our own corporation and promote ourselves. We had our manager constitute a partnership legally. Desi Lou Productions Incorporated was launched. It was important to find out how the public re reacted to us together. So with the help of Pepito Perez, the renowned Spanish clown, and my radio writers, we put together a Mr. and Mrs. Vaudeville act. Desi sang and played the bongos. I kept trying to bet into his nightclub acts. I also did a, a baggy pants routine with a cello loaded with a stool, a plunger, flowers, and props, and flipped and barked like a seal. That hour-long act was a real potpourri of all our talents, like one of our Desi Lou goulash parties at the ranch. During a miserably hot week in June 1950, we flew the troupe into Chicago. Desi and I spent the afternoon rehearsing and then went to dinner at the, the pump room, returning to our hotel room about midnight. As I climbed into bed, I, I, I noticed sleepily that some of the bureau drawers were half open with the contents spilling out. Why did Harriet leave everything in such a mess? I asked myself as I fell asleep. At 4 a.m., I woke up, sat bolt right up in bed, and exclaimed, Harry would never do a thing like that. I switched on the lights and cried out, Desi, we've been robbed! All my jewelry was gone, including the 40 carat aquamarine Ak engagement ring Desi had given me. Within a few minutes, our bedroom was swarming with police, checking and taking fingerprints. In the middle of all the excitement, I excused myself and, and upchucked in the bathroom. Don't be upset, Lucy, darling, Desi comforted me. I'll replace everything you lost. I was sad about my jewelry. None of it was ever recovered, but that wasn't the half of it. I had been suffering from a nervous tummy in the morning for several weeks. That morning, it occurred to me, I might be pregnant. This time, I decided that nothing was going to endanger my becoming a mother. I had canceled everything except my radio show and sat placidly at home, knitting and waiting. When I was going into my fourth month of pregnancy, CBS suddenly gave Desi the green light. They would finance a pilot for a domestic television show featuring the two of us as a married couple. For ten years, Desi and I had been trying to become co-stars and parents. Now our dearest, our dearest dreams were being realized much too fast. We suddenly felt unprepared for either and began to have second thoughts. But this was the first real chance Desi and I would have to work together, something we'd both been longing for for years. The next day, I told my agent, Don Sharp, we'll do it. Desi and I want to work together more than anything else in the world. A week later, our agent phoned to say, Philip Morris wants to sponsor you. We were on our way. However, in the next few weeks, the deal twisted and changed and almost blew up. 
The sponsors had a second demand. They not only wanted a weekly show, they wanted it done live in New York. We refused to move to New York. Desi suggested that we film the show live in front of an audience. The network people screamed. A film show costs twice as much as a live one. The sponsor couldn't put more money, and neither could CBS. So Desi made a canny offer. In return for a thousand dollars weekly salary cut for us, we were given complete ownership of the show. Originally, CBS had owned half of it. But CBS also agreed to advance the enormous sums of money needed to start film production with Desi as producer. When the deal was finally set, it was late March. I Love Lucy has been called the most popular television show of all time. Such national devotion to one show can never happen again. There are too many shows on too many channels now. But in 1951 to 1952, our show changed Monday nights, the Monday night habits of America. Between 9 and 9.30, taxis disappeared from the streets of New York. Marshall Fields Department Store in Chicago, they hung up a sign that said, We love Lucy too, so from now on, we'll be open on Thursday night instead of Monday. Telephone calls across the nation dropped sharply during that half hour, as well as the water flush rate, as whole families glued to their seats.